Okay, this process that I say I've developed, I stumbled into it, okay? Um, it works, it works every time, and if you change it, it doesn't work anymore. You've just got to go down this path in a particular order. Okay, there's two parts to this. One is the tax season, and one is instituting the actual financial physicals. Okay, so let's talk about tax season first. During tax season, I like to have tax appointments. We have a lot of mail-ins, a lot of drop-offs. I'm sure you guys do too. But I like to have my wealthier clients come in or I'm on the phone with them while I'm doing it or shortly after I'm doing it. I want to be interactive with them. I want to spend some time with them. I want to find out what's been going on in their lives since the last time we talked. And I'm asking probing questions. If, if we're talking for 60 minutes, I'm talking for 10, and they're doing it for 50. I'm looking for additional deductions. This is the same thing you guys are always doing, except there is no way for you to do financial planning in a decent way in the middle of tax season. So what I do is I make a note. I generally have a white sheet of paper, an 8 by 11, 11 and a half sheet of paper on the side of my desk. I write down the client's name. I write down the key issues. I write down what I want to happen. If, it's, if I'm going to personally handle it after tax season, which is rare, uh, I'll stick it on the desk behind me. If I'm going to have my financial planning assistant start transferring the money right there, then I'll turn it over to them. And a lot of times, by the time tax season's over, I've already transferred a lot of this cash to Pershing or done an ACAT transfer to Pershing, and then I start working on it. Their problems are your big money-making opportunities. When you can hear their pain and solve their pain and show them ways uh, to manipulate their financial world, they're yours for life. And if you can't do it, I submit to you, nobody else can. Okay, in your, in your handouts, um, you will see uh, the letter we insert in the tax organizer. We ask for clients to bring in um, their brokerage statements, their insurance policies, anything financial related. And they are proud to hand it to you. We tell them we will not be able to go through it in the middle of tax season. But after, shortly after tax season, I will review it. Listen to these words very carefully. I will review your financial documents and if I think there's a problem, I will give you a call. <coughs> isn't that ominous? <coughs> but, but truth be told, isn't that what they want? They want, you, they want your input. They want you looking over it. Okay? When they come in later, um, or, or if, if I... One of the other questions I'll ask them is, who is giving you advice now? 90% of the time, it's nobody. Okay? Every once in a while, it's Uncle Frank or Cousin Ed. Right? I take that entire stack of financial documents they've just given at me and I've handed it back to them. And I've said, I'm sure Cousin Ed is doing a great job. <laughs> I swear to you, the very next thing that happens is they hand the documents back to you. And they say something like, we're not so sure. <laughs> so you've made the visceral um, connection with them that they understand your value, that they understand you're going beyond the people that they're using now. Now, also in the handouts, I, I provided something like this, uh, and I do that for, more for my staff. This is a little out of date, uh, but I want my staff to be thinking um, about looking at the tax return, what sort of opportunities could be there. There are other um, letters that Money Concepts has put out saying looking at the tax return, go to schedule. Be and, and you'll see some of the interest income and you can talk about getting them different. So there are all kinds of tools. This is just one that I have happened to put together. Um, so that's tax season. If you look at, if you go through your, um, your handouts there, you'll see a two-page questionnaire. Uh, I want my clients to have that filled out before I do any financial planning with them. Behind the two-page questionnaire is a checklist. That checklist is a crutch for my staff. It gives them a guideline, just like, if you can think back to the first time you guys did a tax return, you had a checklist. We have checklists for everything. 
you don't use that checklist anymore because it's, it's ingrained in you. You know what you're doing. You're going from step A to step B. If you have to skip something, you're okay. You've, you've done this long enough. The younger folks need some guardrails. So I encourage you to use this kind of a checklist for the younger folks, the, guy, the folks getting started. Give them a guide to run on. Now, you know, some of the clients are not going to have oil and gas, they're not going to have um, some of the more sophisticated things, but at least they'll be able to talk about them. This, this opens up the conversation. So I'd like them to go down this checklist. Um, yeah. So behind, the, the, the form behind is the two-page questionnaire, the one in the middle is the checklist, and then um, Andrew in my office uses a PowerPoint. We stole this from the Kentucky region from Dan Greedwald and he's kind of changed it and made it his own and he provides this kind of a PowerPoint in front of the client at his desk, shows them the bucket list, you know, and this provides Andrew the comfort that he needs. He doesn't give the client copies of this, that's important. He just shows it on his screen. We don't want to give them something that looks anything like a plan to walk out the office with. We want them to understand we are the relationship, not a piece of paper, okay? So I will give my staff a choice. You know, they can do the things the way I do it, they can do things the way Andrew does it, they can do things the way Matt does it, or Frank, but there are tools to kind of give them a guideline in the beginning. Some of you still may need these kinds of guidelines. It'll make you more confident, okay? But, it, but after a while, you won't need them anymore. Now, outside of tax season, and, and we've done this again this year, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, we could do it every year. We were just focused on different things. But uh, we'll send out 10 to 20 letters a week per CPA uh, or tax professional that wants to do financial planning. The way the numbers work is that 10 of them will um, end up responding and want an appointment in the next two or three weeks. The other 10 are on vacation, they're busy, they don't care, but they'll remember you asked them. They may come back six weeks from now, they may come back um, next tax season, but they'll start to understand that this is something you do. Now, one of the things you want to make sure of is that the person calling to make these appointments is a friendly voice that the clients are going to recognize. As I say, we, we picked up two practices this year. We hired the receptionist from one of the CPA firms we acquired, and she is making these calls for his practice. He didn't do financial planning at his practice. Um, Andrew has probably had um, 30 appointments, or will have 30 appointments by the end of the year, and will probably move close to $3 million by December 31st. If it doesn't happen by December, it'll, it'll roll into January, okay? These are, and we're not trying to close. We're just trying to get the clients interested in working with us and seeing how we work and feeling comfortable with us. Now, if you're working with another CPA like Andrew is doing, and this is the hardest thing for young men and women to do, is not to push and to keep looking at the CPA that has the relationship or the tax professional that has the relationship with the client. So the, the, the firm that we acquired, that practitioner is in these meetings as well. He's nodding. But he's in agreement, he's talking to the clients, he's adding things to them. Andrew's running the meeting, or Tim is running the meeting, but the trust factor is always there. So my guys are looking at uh, um, the CPA that sold this practice and going, is this okay? Do you think this fits? And we're doing this right in front of the client. It's an ongoing di dialogue. The client is feeling more and more comfortable. We're transferring that trust. A year, 18 months from now, it won't matter. But in the beginning, it's terribly important. I see there's a few planners in the room. If, if there are planners in the room that want to work with CPAs, this is the most critical thing you can understand. You should not be making the decisions overtly. You need, you need to be covertly making those decisions. You need to be handing off and, and accepting the trust from the tax professional and let the tax professional nod or comment to the clients. Okay? Nobody cares about you as, as a professional. If the, if the tax per person is in that room, Nobody cares about you. You are just a tool that that tax professional is using to help the client. So you need to bury your ego. Once the relationship between you and the client develops, and it may take a year or two, you won't need that anymore. 
but in the beginning, it's mission critical. So here are the guidelines. Connect to the relationship with you, create an ongoing dialogue, have a confident, assumptive close, move the money to you, educate the clients about their choices, and only after that do you talk about product. I have doctors come in all the time. We, we do a lot of work for St. Jude Hospital in Fullerton, California, and they ask me about my rates of return. That's, that's their first question because that's the only thing they understand. And we completely ignore that and, and start to learn about who they are, what their needs are, what their family is, and they start to see it's a different relationship. It's a different approach. We're looking at reduction of risk. In fact, I tell the doctors all the time, my job is not to maximize your return, it's to minimize your risk. You're not going to get rich off your investments. You're going to get rich off your, your, your uh, physician practice. I'm going to stop you from being poor. I'm going to make sure you don't lose it. Too many of the doctors out there uh, are, are, are easy pickings for fast talkers. We're going to make sure that we protect them. Once they make that turn mentally, they're ours. Okay? 